Hi, I'm Aaron Bells, and welcome to Planet Insomnia. In this episode, we have another incredible kidnapping case that is now in the news again, because the serial killer in this case, Joseph Duncan, died recently. Shasta Groney, now a young woman in her mid-twenties, was a little girl who survived against all odds. Her story of survival tells us a lot about the human spirit and the will to live. Shasta Grone, the lone survivor. On May 16, 2005, authorities discovered the bodies of Brenda Grone, 40, her boyfriend, Mark McKenzie, 37, and her son, Slade Grone, 13, in their home outside the city of Coeur d'Alene in Idaho. Two of Brenda Grone's other children, Dylan, 9, and Shasta, 8, were missing. An Amber Alert was issued and searchers combed the area for the missing children, while authorities investigated the deaths at the home as homicides. Autopsies determined the cause of death to be blunt trauma to the head. Authorities also noted that the victims had been bound. This was a brutal crime that shook that community to its core. The Kootenay County Sheriff's Office in Idaho, which conducted the investigation, also released a statement. In May of 2005, the Grone family of Kootenay County, living in the Wolf Lodge Bay Area, was brutally victimized by a serial killer passing through our community. The family was stalked, attacked and tortured, the statement said. It was one of the worst tragedies Idaho has ever seen. Joseph Edward Duncan III, born February 25, 1963, died March 28, 2021, was an American convicted serial killer and child molester, at the time of the attack on the Grone family, Duncan was on the run from a child molestation charge in Minnesota. Duncan was a registered sex offender, he once told a therapist that he estimated he had raped 13 younger boys by the time he was 16. He spent much of his life in prison. This is another criminal who would be released only to commit more heinous crimes. His most violent string of crimes occurred in May 2005. While driving across the Idaho Panhandle on Interstate 90, Duncan spotted two children playing in their swimsuits in the yard of a home next to the freeway. He pulled off the road and started surveillance of the home, he later broke in. This was not a random crime, Duncan was well prepared to carry out the brutal attacks on that specific family. What we know of what happened on that horrific night is from Shasta's own accounts of the events. As told in an interview on the Crime Watch TV show, Shasta told investigators her mother called her into the living room, where she saw Duncan wearing black gloves and holding a gun. Her captor tied her mother's hands with nylon zip ties and did the same to her mother's fiancé and her brother Slade. Duncan then took Shasta and Dylan from the house and placed them inside the stolen rental car. While she waited with her brother, she heard her mother's fiancé scream and then saw her injured older brother Slade stagger away from the entrance to the home. He tied up Brenda Grone, 40, her boyfriend Mark McKenzie, 37, and her son, Slade Grone, 13, before beating the three to death with a hammer. Neither Shasta nor Dylan witnessed the murders. One can only imagine how more traumatic the events would be to the children had they witnessed the killings. After killing her family, Duncan kidnapped Shasta and Dylan and kept them in a Montana cabin for the next six weeks. There may have been a time when Shasta believed that maybe her family had survived, but Duncan told her he beat her family to death with a hammer. The children were physically and sexually abused. Dylan would also be tortured. Duncan showed more disdain for Dylan and often took out his anger on the poor boy. Duncan eventually shot Dylan with a shotgun and killed him in front of Shasta. I couldn't even say anything, like I couldn't scream, I couldn't... I couldn't, I just didn't even know what to do. Um, and so he came up to me and Joseph Duncan was crying. He said it was an accident, he didn't mean to. During his trial, Duncan insisted that Dylan's death was an accident. However, Shasta has a conflicting account of what happened to her brother. I didn't know what the first shot was, but I knew that the second time was on purpose. He said that he did it so that Dylan wouldn't have to feel pain. According to Shasta, Immediately after killing Dylan, 
Duncan started crying and told her that he only killed him to put him out of his misery. Shasta also reported that Duncan nearly killed her, days after killing Dylan. She said he gave her the choice to be killed either by strangulation or with a gun. Shasta chose strangulation, maybe thinking this would buy her more time, so she could plead for her life. Duncan proceeded to wrap a rope around her neck and pull it tight. Shasta begged Duncan to stop, using his nickname, Jet, and he immediately did. He even asked her if she would like to meet his mother, to which she responded yes, and the two drove back towards Ker Delane. Shasta throughout this whole ordeal was always hoping that someone would rescue her. She thought that if she and Duncan were out somewhere in public, someone would recognize her and try and help. She therefore would ask Duncan to buy her things at stores. She was seen on a security camera at a convenience store. No one tried to help in that case, thinking that she was probably Duncan's daughter. Shasta's luck would soon finally change when while driving towards Ker Delane, they stopped at a Denny's restaurant. There, a waitress recognized Shasta and called the police. The police arrested Duncan without a struggle and Shasta was finally free. On January 18, 2007, Duncan was indicted by a federal grand jury in Ker Delane on 10 counts of kidnapping, kidnapping resulting in death, aggravated sexual abuse of a minor, and sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and other crimes. On August 27, 2008, after three hours of deliberation, the jury recommended the death penalty, and the judge imposed three death sentences for kidnapping resulting in death, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and use of a firearm in a violent crime resulting in death, all related to the death of Dylan Grone. On November 3, 2008, Duncan was sentenced to an additional three consecutive terms of life without parole in federal prison for kidnapping Shasta Grone and for sexually abusing Shasta and Dylan. Shasta Grone lived with her biological father for many years after being freed, but her life was a life of struggles with drug addiction. The horrible traumatic ordeal she went through had marked her life. She eventually learned to overcome her addictions, and with the birth of her children, her life took a turn for the better. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, he stole my innocence and he stole my family from me, but he's not going to steal the fact that I can, you know, bring children into this world, and that makes me really happy. In October 2020, Duncan underwent brain surgery after he was diagnosed with glioblastoma. He declined any treatment and rejected chemotherapy and radiation therapy. Medical staff at the Federal Bureau of Prisons estimated he had between 6 and 12 months left to live. He died on March 28, 2021, at the age of 58. The death of Joseph Duncan brought some closure for Shasta and allowed her to reflect on the anger she felt for Duncan. On that day, Shasta released the following statement. One thing is for sure, he does not exist anymore. Now, we can live our lives knowing that. For so long I have been struggling with hate towards that man. Today, I woke up feeling like my soul was finally free, the statement reads. I hope other people affected by Joseph Duncan were able to wake up feeling the same way. Shasta was able to survive due to her incredible instincts, intelligence, and amazing will to live. And that concludes another episode of Planet Insomnia. Thank you for watching this video. We're grateful for your support of this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. And until next time, stay safe and try to get some sleep if you can.